Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What good news. He is able. Amen. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from our and the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Don't give up on God. He hasn't given up on you. Hallelujah. Amen. I think that's, other than just being saved, that's one of the biggest wonders for each of us is that God hasn't given up on us. <laughs> because uh, we really can't find much about ourselves that would say that he ought to be still extending grace and mercy toward us. Yet he is. Amen. And so I thank God today and I just honor everybody. Our little skeleton crew that's here, the ministers of the gospel, deacons and trustees and uh, ushers and uh, persons who are pivotal in getting this out to you. Um, everybody who's blessed to be here and everybody who's joining us, good morning to you. Amen. And maybe you aren't all fixed up like you would have been had you been coming out to the church, but you're looking good. Amen. Amen. And don't say I'm lying. You're looking good. You, uh, you probably can remember some days when you didn't look as well as you're looking right now. So we thank God for today. I thank God. I just thank him for another chance to be in the house of prayer. Grateful to him for things being as good as they are. Many things, many things we wish were a little different than they are, but they are as they are. And we are where we are by the mercy and the grace of God. So I dare not complain. I just thank God for allowing us to be here today. Amen. Glad for everybody. Amen. Hope you're all ready. Amen. Ready to settle before your TV or computer or whatever with Bible in hand and ready to uh, get into the Word of God for a little bit. Amen. We thank God for the second Lord's Day in September in this year of our Lord, 2020. This is still his year now. Don't let the pandemic or any other things cause us to lose sight that this, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And I think if we can just say that, if we can just agree on that, the heathen and the believer, if we can just say the earth is the Lord's and and the fullness thereof. I believe we can we can provoke God to turn some things around if we could just acknowledge the earth is the Lord's. I, if you're saved or unsaved, if you're saved and you ain't living nothing, the earth is still the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If you're saved but you're backslidden, the earth is still the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If you've heard about Jesus but you never received him, the earth is still the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they who dwell therein. Amen. For he established it. Amen. He established it. Amen. And I don't think, I have no reason to believe and no evidence that he is panicking because of what's going on. Amen. He's still God. All by himself. He's still sitting on the throne. Amen. And I, I just thank God that he allows us to, that he, we are his. He calls us his own. Amen. So be encouraged today. Not only should we be encouraged, but be an encourager. Amen. There's no sense in getting all that encouragement and keeping it to yourself. 
Amen. Be an encourager. Speak life to somebody. Speak encouragement to somebody. Amen. Lots of folk are at wit's end. Amen. And we have the good news. Amen. And that's simply that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they who dwell therein. Amen. Amen. And he hadn't ever permitted us to get into something that he didn't give us a way out of. Amen. He's never permitted us to get into anything that he didn't give us a way out. Now, sometimes we don't take the way. Amen. I, I listen to people. Amen. Everybody's a counselor now, you know. <laughs> Amen. People who can't spell psychology are psychologists. You know, everybody deep now. Amen. And they're good at analyzing their mess. Amen. But let me tell you something. God is in control of this thing. Amen. And if it get kind of tight sometimes, if I have to cry sometimes, if I don't know exactly how things are going sometimes, when my feet hit the ground, I, my feet hit the ground knowing that God is still in control of everything. Glory to God. Glory to God. And I don't want that devil to think that he unnerving me. I might get upset for a minute, but I am not unnerved. Amen, because God is yet God, and God is still in control. Glory to God. Be encouraged and become an encourager. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Everybody here, amen, anybody listening, if you are one of those people who tries to run your life by your rules, amen, and you think you can think your way through everything, Amen. I'm here to tell you. It's just a matter of time. You, you, there's a crash. There's an imminent crash. There's a crash at hand. And you are the victim. Our mama used to say, don't be too smart for your own good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't be too smart for your own good now. It'll get you. Glory to God. Amen. God has it all under control. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Amen. I'm, I am encouraged. I'm not trying to talk to get to a point. I am encouraged. Right where I stand. Everything that's going on. Every challenge that's going on right now in my body. Amen. I am yet encouraged. Amen. Amen. Every attack of the enemy. Amen. Tells me that God must be up to something. Because if God wasn't up to something, the enemy wouldn't be attacking like this. Amen. He wouldn't be trying so hard to get me off track or of course if God wasn't up to something. Glory to God. Glory to God. So I'm encouraged and I hope you are too. Amen. 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 Thank God for everybody. Amen. We love you. Seniors, elders, we love you so much. Amen. We thank God for just keeping you. Continue to be wise. Continue to take care of yourself. Amen. Children, babies, take care of them babies. Amen. Amen. And children, you're back in school now. Amen. If school is your den, you're back in school. School is your bed, you're back in school. You hear what I'm saying? You can't be in school and out of school at the same time. You're back in school now. And you're going you to either pass or flunk doing what the system is requiring of you right now. I'm, so, I'm making announcements at the end of the sermon, but I'm going to say this while it's on my mind. Amen. Because the, those who run the greater risk of suffering the most are those who are suffering the most already. Those who are suffering the most already. Those who are failing the most. Those who are challenged the most. will suffer most greatly. So please, your mamas and daddies, your parents got to go out and work and they leave you with instructions. I'm telling you, mamas and daddies, y'all you, need to go in the bathroom, wash your face and come out and tell them to turn a new, new sheriff in town. 
Y'all stop babying these children and think they're going to be nice all on their own. They're your children. You know what's in them. You give them the rules. I was seven years old. And the, uh, and the older, I had three siblings below me. And mama could leave the house when I was seven. And I could handle business with three younger siblings. Now y'all got 17 year olds y'all scared to leave home. Call them suckers to attention. Stop blessing them and then expecting them to be obedient. Why should they be obedient if they can enjoy everything with you treat with, with them being disobedient? Don't you talk about what any other body is doing to you. You're putting yourself back in bondage. Ignorance is bondage. Anyway, another day, another way. Some of y'all kind of tight, but you be all right. I ain't taking a word back, and I mean exactly what I say you are setting kids up to fulf to fill up these penitentiaries they still building a court system that is self-supporting because no it knows we will supply them with people so that there will always be public defenders there will always be amen prosecutors you better get some law and order back in your own house Anyway, <laughs> our mom used to say, them same clothes you get mad in, you get glad in. <laughs> we began a, a, a mini series within the series, and we were in this series on the sovereignty of God, and we will move expeditiously along. But we do need everybody here and everybody listening in to just stay with us for a few minutes. Amen. Amen. And of course, our theme for the series is the sovereignty of God. Amen. Amen. And we are in the midst of a mini series that is entitled Sufficiency in God's Sovereignty. Sufficiency in God's Sovereignty. In other words, we find what we need in God's sovereignty. Amen. I don't have it all, but the sufficiency I need is in the sovereignty of God. Amen. And of course, as we said last week, this is born out of a, uh, this miniseries was actually born out of a uh, week before last, uh, just the word segment. Amen. Uh, that focused on the presence and the prominence and the preeminence of God uh, in uh, all circumstances, no matter how remote or removed um, they may seem God is there. Amen. And so we're just uh, led of the Lord to uh, investigate a few biblical circumstances that uh, show us that our sufficiency is in God's sovereignty. Amen. And last week we dealt with what? Amen. Small stick, almighty God. We dealt with old Mo, Mo, Moses. Amen. Amen. And uh, uh, today we move on to the book of Judges. We're going to kind of, uh, um, we invite you to read verse uh, chapter 6 and 7, but we're going to just um, take a, a few verses out of chapter 7. Uh, to use as our text. Amen. So we're in the book of Judges chapter 7 and we're going to read verses 19 through 21. Judges 7 19 through 21. Judges 7 19 through 21. Amen. And uh, if you have it, if you have it at home, we pray that you do. Uh, those who are here, um, 
from your Bibles or from the screens. Let's read together. Amen. The word of God, Judges 7, 19 through 21. So Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch. And they had but newly set the watch. And they blew the trumpets and break the pitchers that were in their hands. And the three companies blew the trumpets and break the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow with them. And they cried, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And they stood every man in his place round about the camp. And all the host ran and cried and fled. And all the host ran and cried and fled. Uh, that no one would boast. That no one would boast. Amen. That no one would boast. We, uh, many of us are familiar with uh, Gideon and his little fleece thing. Lord, if it's your will, wet all around the fleece, but leave the fleece dry. Okay, Lord, if it's your will, wet the fleece and leave everything around it dry. <laughs> um, and and many folk um, gather from that that Gideon was seeking to know God's will. Uh, there was a bigger thing at work right there, though. He wasn't just seeking to know the will of God for Israel because God had already, in chapter 6, said, I'm going to bring them out. God had already pronounced his will. Amen. He'd already declared it. it. There was already a decree. I'm going to bring them out. Amen. If you read chapter 6 verses 12 following, that's what you'll find. Don't read it now. <laughs> he had already said. So, so why this uh, fleece thing? The truth is, Gideon found it difficult to believe that God would use him. Not that God would bring Israel out. <laughs> oh boy, now, now, now don't blame me for how long the rest of this lasts because it's going to last according to how well you learn it. <laughs> how quickly you learn it. Gideon knew Gideon. Know thyself. Know thyself. Some of us specialize in knowing everybody else. Amen. We, I, I know so and so. I know so. I know him. I know him. I know him. But do you know your? <laughs> Are you in touch with your? Gideon knew that he could be self-serving. Amen. And Gideon also knew that he could be fearful. Amen. So Gideon does the fleece thing not to see if God is going to deliver Israel. But he's looking for some confirmation. God, you mean you mean me? <laughs> Amen. Oh boy. And I can appreciate that in Gideon. Amen. Anybody thinking that God is leading them to do anything, especially some particular ministry. Needs to be really in touch with self. Amen. 
Amen. If you look at the landscape of the church, meaning the whole body of Christ right now, we've got a plethora of loose cannons. People who cannot be taught, people who cannot be led, people who think they know everything. Because they're not in touch with them. Anybody, I've said it many times, anybody who's running toward doing ministry, especially pastoral ministry, I already know you ain't called. Because this is what you do when you can't do nothing else to please God. <laughs> Amen. You don't do it for a paycheck. You don't do it to get up on this holy platform. You do it because God compels you to do it. So Gideon wasn't feeling much like a leader. Amen. And he sees the multitude of these Midianites. He ain't feeling so, his self-esteem ain't too good right now. His, the, the number of the enemies is overwhelming. And he is hearing God say, blow the trumpet. Oh my Lord. <laughs> he is feeling doubtful of himself. He sees the overwhelming number of enemies. And he hears God saying, blow the trumpet. So, when you're sure it's God, you can go on and do it. When you're sure it's God. Just be very sure. It can't be ego. It can't be feelings. It's got to be God. Because obeying God will make you look absolutely absurd sometimes. But I respect Gideon because although he felt insecure about himself, and although he felt overwhelmed by the number of Midianites. When he heard God say below the trumpet. He blew the trumpet. Amen. And at the blowing of the trumpet. From all over Israel. 32,000 soldiers come. Amen. Now, for a tiny nation, a motley crew of loosely connected tribes, that was a pretty good showing. Amen. 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 But Israel was facing an army of the Midianites that was numbered at 135,000. That's well over four to one. Amen. Gabriel blows the trumpet. 32,000 soldiers show up, but he still is facing a foe. Of 135,000 enemy troops. So Gideon has blown the trumpet. The army has shown up. But Gideon is still wondering. If God really wanted to fight this army. Why didn't he choose a more popular person? Why didn't he choose somebody whose name had a ring to it? 
Why didn't he choose um, somebody who could stand and really rally these people? Why did he? <laughs> Why would he call me? Why? Why would he call me? To such a conflict when the odds are so substantial. If it were more evenly matched, Gideon probably wouldn't have thought like that. But God. Y'all see it's already a setup. Y'all, you can already see that. Yeah, God will put you in a situation. Where you aren't supposed to make it. I, I, I get so concerned when I hear people talk about what they've been through. And most of what they say is I. I didn't know what I was going to do. But I sat down and I said to myself. I better do this and I better do that. And I don't know how I did it. Gideon is wondering how is this supposed to happen? Then in Judges 7, 1 following as though the situation were not tense enough God starts doing some other stuff. Oh boy, and I'm sure some of y'all looking at this right now, and some of y'all, the few of us in this house of prayer, uh, can, can testify that when you're going through, sometimes God will permit some other stuff. He'll permit just what you don't need right then. Like God, I mean, you, this can't be my mail, God, because you already know that mail you sent me last week. I ain't over that. <laughs> oh my God, God moves as only He can. One hundred and thirty-five thousand Midianites, thirty-two thousand. Israelites and God starts moving to thin out the number hallelujah glory to God that no one would boast yeah because you see if you study uh, the history of battles even in America or worldwide lots of generals are given credit for taking smaller forces and capturing larger armies. If they are good strategists. God said that no one should boast. I'm going to thin the Israelites out. So get in. Tell the army. Everybody who is fearful can go home. Oh, Lord. I don't know how people expect to get ministry done when we're fearful. We spend too much time fearful of one another and fearful of the enemy, that we can't even get fearful of the enemy. 22,000 went home. Y'all seeing this? So there was 32,000 looking at fighting 135,000. Now there's 10,000 looking at fighting 
132,000. Right? That's about 132, 135,000. 135 to 1. Right? God said that no one should boast. <laughs> Get in. You got to thin them out some more. Take them down to the brook and tell them get a drink of water. And the ones who bend over and stick their face in the water, you set them on one side. And the ones who put their head down but keep their eyes up laughing like a dog, you put them to one side. Now, I'm not going to get into the theological implications of the difference. Except putting this little two cent word. The Lord says over and over, watch. And baby, you can't watch when your face all in the water. You can't watch when you are consumed by satisfying with satisfying yourself. Glory to God, but the ones who could spread their front of their legs and put their head down but keep their eyes up. God said, take the ones who put their face in the water. Send them home. That's 9,000. I see. 700. Glory to God. That means. Amen. Oh, glory to God. The 300 who lapped like dogs. I'm going to use them to deliver Israel. Now that might be all right. Some of the Midianites start laughing and saying, Y'all, y'all can this 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 small stuff here, y'all hand lap. We going home. But all of them stay right there. Let me tell you something, baby. When you're going through them e evil demons who are in core hearts with one another, they are in covenant with one another. And those demons will call a convention over you. You don't need all of them to fight you. Because you're already vulnerable. But demons are so wicked. That they don't care how weak you are. They don't care how worn down you are. They want to just participate in your annihilation. Glory to God. So here we are. 450 to 1. Ooh. 450 to 1. So that no one boasts. The number is reduced so that no one boasts. Look at the weapons of warfare. They didn't have mighty chariots. They didn't even have healthy camels. They weren't told to even take bows and arrows. Take your trumpet Take a torch and take a jar. Now, what person will send you into battle against an overwhelming enemy with a trumpet, a, a torch, and a jar? Glory to God. Sound to me like God is saying, 
that no one should boast. I'm going to send you against an overwhelming enemy and it's going to look like you plumb crazy because you ain't going to have nothing with which to fight them. Woo. That no one would boast. Hallelujah. He reduced the numbers. He caught, he used some funny weapons. Now, those of you who've been in warfare in the war during the war war, what would you think if you were given weapons comparable to these to fight them enemies and you could hear their bullets sizzling by your head? Hallelujah. But that is all. The number is reduced. The weapons look funny. But God uses what he can control. Ain't but 300 of y'all. And it's 135,000 of them. But I want you to go down. Somebody say go down. <laughs> now I will use my mind right there to say when he said go down that he was already telling them you got the victory. You ain't going up to him. You going. <laughs> Glory to God. And he used the cover of night. Now, God being God, it is crazy to assume this would have been a starlit night. I'm figuring this was a cloudy night. Would it be hard to see your hand in front of your face? But God said, take your torch, cover it with the picture. trumpet the shofar divide yourself into three divisions 100 each glory to God that no one would boast I'm going to use night time because if 300 of y'all go in the daytime y'all enemies going to fall off the camel laughing at you but I'm going to send you with what I control. I'm telling you today. It looks overwhelming. It looks like there's no way you can make it. But the Lord says. That no one would boast. I'm making you look like a loser. I'm making you look like a fool. I'm making you look like a wimp. Glory to God that no one would boast. Then God, Gideon and his armor bearer sneaked down into the Midianite camp. You know it had to be dark. They got close enough to hear two Midianite soldiers talking. Come on, somebody. And Gideon heard one Midianite say, I had a dream. I had a dream about a barley loaf that rolled down over us and we were destroyed. The loaf was nothing. The loaf shouldn't have been feared. But one little barley loaf. And the other soldier said, that ain't good. Sound to me like we've been turned into the hands of the Israelites. Glory to God. God will let you hear enough so you can get your praise on. Some of us crying until all the enemy is dead. Don't wait for him to die. Start shouting now. Don't wait for him to run. Start shouting now. 
Glory to God! Glory to God! My God, my God, my God, my God! Well, God wasn't just working with Gideon, but God was working on the Midianites. So because of a dream, he planted fear among the enemy camp. Come on here, somebody. I need somebody who can say the enemy was ready for me. And I knew I was going to lose. But something happened in the enemy camp. Glory to God. God struck up fear through a dream. It ain't just what God does through us. God can touch your enemies and you not know anything about it. God can tell your enemies, now that one right there, you need to leave that one alone. <laughs> Hallelujah. So Gideon, with 300 men, some crazy weapons, under the cover of night, is encouraged. Who am I preaching to this morning? 300 men facing 135,000 enemies. The enemies got more camel than they can count. Glory to God. The Israelites up in the mountain walking down. The Israelites got shofar, the trumpet, the torch, and a pitcher. Oh, Jesus. I ain't going to get happy yet. I just know what the Lord can do. That's all I'm saying. So, once Gideon heard the panic start creeping through the Midianites. The Lord let him know now is the time. And he had already told the other two divisions of 100, when you hear me, do what I do. Hallelujah. So Gideon's 100 said the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. See, some of us run into battle talking about the sword of Kenneth. That's why I lost. But you say the sword of the Lord. And then he had them to break the pitcher. Let me tell you, what the three divisions had done was they had surrounded the enemy camp. So when they got instructions to break the pitcher, everywhere the enemy looked, he saw lights. Glory to God. And the enemy got upset. And the enemy got scared. And the enemy saw numbers that were not there. And the Bible says they used their swords and started striking down one another. Three hundred people with the supplies of the ninety seven hundred who went away. You see, had God not done it that way, it'd have been ten thousand people with three hundred lamps. 
And that would have been an awkward number to surround the city. But he, 300, took the 300 lamps and the 300 shofars of everybody and did the job that no one I get so weary of people in Christendom who want to do something exciting so they can boast about it. Amen. God can heal, but he doesn't need me taking credit for him. I did this and so and so happened. I touched these people and so and so happened. You need to shut your confounded mouth. When God does what God does, he is doing it that no one would boast. No one. Thank you, Lord. The Bible causes us to know, hallelujah, that those who didn't die fled. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you got to know when to use even your weak soldiers. There's a time for even the third string to go in. But you don't do that in a tight game when it could go anyway. <laughs> Glory to God. But when God showed that I already put them in your hands and they, those who remained started running, then Gideon sent the word. Come on, y'all. Who stick your face in the water? We can use you now. Come on, y'all. Even scary folk can get a piece of the action. Amen. He called in the people he has sent away that they might participate in routing the enemy. Now you would read that on the way to routing out the enemy. Gideon ran into a couple kings and asked their assistance. And they denied him. Don't you worry about who won't help you. If you are in the will of God. If you are in the will of God. If you're not in the will of God, you, ain't, you don't deserve no help. But Gideon said, I'm going to take this handful and I'm going to kill them and then I'm going to come back. <laughs> now, I ain't telling none of y'all to go commit murder. But I'm telling you there's some people you need to cut out. There's some people you need to erase out of your life. There's some people you need to quit calling. They already showed, they won't call you back. And every time you do reach them, they say, oh, I forgot. Oh, I've been, you hear the, you know what the lie they're going to tell. You know what they're going to tell the fifth lie or the fourth lie. Amen. Cut them off. God's favor is with those who are with God. Let me say that again. God's favor is with those who are with God. I don't care how, the, the, how outnumbered they are. I don't care how feeble they look. If God is with them, you better leave them alone. That no one would boast. Diminished number unorthodox weapons the, circum the physical weather circumstances that God controlled and God inciting fear in the enemy camp <laughs> y'all this, this word here is so good 
Now, I'm going to confess, I read this thing last year. And I've been wanting to preach it since last year. But I couldn't preach the thing. God brought it back this week. God said, now I release you. Now is the time for this message to come forward. Y'all hear what I'm saying? It ain't about me. It ain't about what I like. It ain't even about what I want. It's about getting out the word. And God says, I need my people to see that that sufficiency is in my sovereignty. Sufficiency ain't on who you, whose side you think you on or who knows your name. Or the... Me and you equal a majority. Now, I know that should be you and I. I'll change it later. But me and you, we're a majority. I want to speak to that weary spirit. I want to speak to that downcast spirit. I want to speak to that spirit who tries and tries. And it seems like the more you try, the worse you get treated. Hallelujah. You and God, you and Jesus are a majority. You hear what I'm saying? See, you are freaking out over who doesn't seem to be with you. Sometimes you got to let people know. You know one thing? I love you, but I ain't going to die over you now. I ain't going to fool over you now. That no one would boast. I remember this story. The first I heard it, I really didn't read it. I heard it, and it was unclear. But after I started reading it, and saw that God used 300 torches covered by pictures to surround the camp. And at the breaking of the pictures, clay pictures, the camp is surrounded. And 300 shofars start announcing the presence and the power of God. Hallelujah. Your enemy can't stand. I don't care who it is. I don't care what it is. You need to have a meeting with the Lord. And let him give you some instructions that no one would boast. You hear what I'm saying? So that you can't say, I I outsmarted nobody or I outmaneuvered nobody. Let God give you some instructions that no one would boast. I'm sure most of us have been in situations we wanted to handle ourselves. Amen. Especially when it involved, you know, just a tax. And you, you know, you just kind of want to set people straight. Kind of want to just, you know, let them know. Um, you know, give them, tell them a thing or two. <laughs> but thanks be unto God. God sends his glory to the weak, to the disenfranchised, not to the proud, not to the arrogant, not to the puffed up, but to the weak he sends his power. And his power is deliverance and deliverance is salvation. And so at the right time while we were yet sinners, he sent his power. To the weak. He sent deliverance to the weak. He sent salvation to the weak. Once and for all. Through Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God responds. When the weak cry out. And he sent his perfect deliverer. To save the helpless and the hopeless. Jesus took that penalty. He rose from the dead. 
offering salvation to all who acknowledge sins and trust Christ alone. He rose from the dead, offering salvation to all who will acknowledge sins and trust Christ alone. He rose from the dead, offering salvation to all who would acknowledge their sins and trust Christ alone. Now, it's kind of interesting when God sent Israel into Canaan land, I really didn't think much of some of the Israelites who let some of the Canaanites stay. But God let them, let them stay. Because God knew that further down the road, I'm going to have to remind these children of mine just who I am. So I'm going to let them, let some of the enemy stay. Because I'm going to use them later in my plan. To remind my children of who I am. And through these Canaanites. God shows his mercy to Israel over and over again. Over and over again. Every time God shows up, as he did through Christ at salvation, every time he does, we experience a little bit of God. Every time he works it out against the odds, we experience a little bit of God. Every time we wake up sane when we felt the last thing we felt before we fell asleep was that we were going crazy. We experience a little bit of God. Yeah. After we cried all we think we can cry. And the Lord sends something to just make us fall off the chair laughing. We experience a little bit of God. Hallelujah. That no one would boast. You see, Gideon was concerned. He thought that the more troops, the better. God knew that the fewer troops, the better. <laughs> yeah. Gideon looked at himself and he was full of fear. God is fearless. Gideon is worried about winning. God is concerned for glory. That's what God, God wants us to give him glory. He could have just blown a wind and killed off all the Midianites. But he had to do it through his people so that his people could wake up and say, you know what, we need to give God glory. We just need to. Now I'm asking the few of us in here today and I'm asking those who are looking on right now, have we withheld some glory that belongs to God? Have we, uh, even if it was unwittingly, taken some credit that really belongs to God? that no one would boast. God permitted things to go just as they did. And I'm telling you, we can have the same victory today. No power of our own. What we got to do is give God glory. So I tell you to call forth your situations now. If they, if they be individuals, amen, just put them, at, put them at the altar. Call them forth. Amen. Call their names. Amen. Amen. If it's situations, if it's sickness in your body, call it. Call it sickness in my pain in my back, in my knees, and my legs. Pressure on my mind. Call it out. If it's financial, call it out. 
I messed up, Lord. I over-obligated myself. I, two years ago when I got in this debt, I wasn't, I ain't thinking about, I wasn't thinking about no corona. And those who were thinking about corona wasn't thinking about no virus. <laughs> Hallelujah. I ain't blind and I ain't crazy. <laughs> Here we are now, feeling overwhelmed. And we've become political pawns. Amen. And folk are deciding whether they're going to make us happy or not, depending on how it seems like we might vote. <laughs> one person said of my brother God rest him who just passed one, one person said my, my brother said I'll eat your last biscuit and tell you about yourself <laughs> See, so all I'm going to tell you is cast the check but vote right <laughs> All right, I'll start with that. I'll start with that. <laughs> Just think about that biscuit. <laughs> um, God is concerned for souls, and so am I. That's, that's my life's passion. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And so I am given to getting good news out to people and this church is given to getting good news out to people. So we bless God that even in the midst of this pandemic it's not perfect but we do have some avenues of getting good news out to people. People need to be saved, y'all. People are dying like dripping water. And I'm so concerned that many of them are facing eternity unprepared or ill-prepared. So cry out, give, give the gospel, give, let's give the gospel to the backslider who just needs to come on back home. We send out the gospel, the good news, the good news. Hallelujah to the ones who did and said the right things to give your life to Christ, but you haven't uh, really been empowered by the Holy Ghost. You, you need the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. To those who are just struggling from day to day and trying to cover more ground than it was intended for you to cover and you're wearing more hats than you thought you'd ever have to wear. Uh, we pray your strength. We pray your strength because the enemy wants to weaken you down. Glory to God. We pray your strength today. So we extend that invitation to Christian discipleship. We ask for those to come, those who need to be saved. And those who need to come back to the Lord, be reconciled those who need the power and presence of the Holy Ghost in a substantial way those who just need strengthening you you good you sound with the Lord you just need to be strengthened and encouraged we're with you and more importantly the Lord is with you you are not by yourself those who are facing legal matters, you are not by yourself. Those who are facing medical issues, you're not by yourself. Now face the issues, but drop that personal possessive pronoun. Stop talking about my headache and 
my high blood pressure, my cancer, my, and I'm, as as the elders would say, and I'm mine. That is not. No, 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 no. It may afflict me, but I am not owning it. And the Lord is going to heal me one way or another. He's going to heal me by taking the affliction away from me. Or taking me away from the affliction. One way or another, he's going to heal me. He's going to heal me. I'm, I'm totally sad, confident in that. So if you need to come today, we beg, we implore you. Um, I'm going to pray a simple prayer and ask those who are here and even those who are home to pray along. And if there's somebody in your midst who's making this decision, then uh, if that's your family member, if y'all live in the same house and all, get close enough to put your hand on that shoulder. Yeah. They've been feeling lonely and alone long enough. Just be with them for just a moment. Hallelujah. Anybody here in this skeleton crew that has things that need to be put at the foot of the cross? Yeah, you need to say it in your spirit right now. I'm, I'm releasing this. I'm giving up this. I'm putting that person. I'm this situation, I'm putting it at the foot of the cross. I'm, you got to do it. Yeah. Yet after, we be, uh, otherwise we sit through a service like this and send healing to others and we end up missing out on the healing. Not so. So I ask you today, if you would, please repeat after me in prayer. And I'm believing the Lord for souls. I heard this morning that there is a person who's from this fellowship who lives in another state who is reconnecting with the fellowship we thank God for all these uh, all the good news thank God for the baptism that we were able to do last Sunday after service amen uh, brother Frank Major went into the water of baptism he had already confessed the Lord but He's baptized now. Pretty sure he's looking now with his wife catching the service. Thank God for that. For those we may not know about, those we may not know about till we get to heaven. But if they've been reached through us, then the Lord will credit them where they belong. Amen. Let's pray. You pray with me. Say after me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come. I am the one who's been fighting my own battles. Lord, I realize that I do have some issues with anger, with unforgiveness. And I've been trying to fix things myself, to pay people back myself. It's been consuming. It's too much for me. While I've been looking at others, I've been ignoring myself. I am a sinner. Who needs to be saved. I believe. That you sent. Your son Jesus. The only means. For mankind to be saved. So I confess with my mouth. That Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart. That you raised Jesus from the dead. I believe after appearing to many he ascended into heaven sits at your right hand 
making intercession. I receive the blood of Jesus as the payment for my sin debt. Thank you for loving me with a love that would not let me go. Thank you for saving me in a way that no one could would boast. Thank you for saving me. I yield myself. I will let someone know. I sub my, submit myself to baptism. I will continue to learn of you. And to live what I learn. As you give me strength. In Jesus name. That's me. Heavenly Father. I am the one. Who heard your word. I yielded to your word. I received Jesus. As my personal savior. But through the events of life, many of them my own fault, I've wandered away in behavior, in thought, in word, I've wandered away. But today, I hear you calling my name. I hear you calling me back to you. You know where I am. You know what condition I'm in. If you can make any use of me. Here I am. I'm coming home. I will let some church know. That I've rededicated myself. And I will continue in fellowship the rest of my life in Jesus' name. That's me. Lord, I'm one of the ones who did with my mouth confess Jesus as Lord. And I believed in my heart that you raised him from the dead. I know that was a work of the Holy Ghost, but I didn't tarry long enough to be infilled with the Holy Ghost. I need him to teach me and guide me and lead me in all truth. And so I submit myself now. Fill me. Fill me. Fill me. With the Holy Ghost. Fill me. Not just with a feeling. But with the Holy Ghost. Give me. The evidence. That you are reigning in my life. I thank you God. For filling me. With the precious Holy Ghost. In Jesus name. That's me. Lord. I'm the one. Who, who I'm saved. Uh, I, I walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. But there's been this one area. Of disobedience. I have failed. To connect. With any body of Christ. I've been looking. For a church. That pleases me. Rather than my looking. To please you. Forgive me. Lead me. Where you want me to go. That I may be taught. That I may be challenged. That I may be stretched. That my gifts may be deposited there. For your glory. In Jesus name. That's me. 
Now, Heavenly Father, I pray for the body of Christ everywhere. I pray for people who are just weak, people who are feeling sickly, people who are tired, people who are depressed, people who are anxious, people who are angry, people who are fearful. Lord, I pray for people who are at wit's end, people who are ready to do uh, something out of character. Lord, I pray that you, through some uh, uh, a miracle of your nature you remind them that you are right where they are right now God in the name of Jesus people who've been saved a long time and now the devil's messing with their minds oh God in the name of Jesus God we know there's power in the name of Jesus so God when we don't know what else to say we just say Jesus when our back is up against the wall, we say Jesus. When we are frustrated, we say Jesus. When we are fearful, we say Jesus. When we are anxious, we say Jesus. When our body is ailing, we say Jesus. When our finances look crazy, we say Jesus. When relationships are shaky, we say Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Strengthen your people, God. Strengthen your people, God. Mothers and fathers, grandmamas, great-grandmamas, great-granddaddies and great-great-grandmamas. Lord, strengthen them today, sons and daughters, nieces and nephews. Strengthen them today, God. Lord, I pray for the young ones to realize that they can't coattail it into heaven. Because mama or grandmama or great grandmama is saved. That they've got to get saved themselves. Not just with their lips. But their hearts have to change. Through the purging of the blood of Jesus. Oh God have your way today. Build up your body today Lord. Oh God churches that are shaking right now. Churches that are in trouble right now. Churches that are in turmoil right now. God stabilize today. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God. Preachers who feel like quitting today. People, preachers who feel like giving up today. I pray for them, God. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. And we don't take it for granted, God. We are so blessed. We've been able to maintain some normalcy in the midst of this abnormal time. We are so blessed, God. Help the people in this church. Help the people who are supported by this church. The people who are paid by this church. To not take it for granted. Those who receive love gifts from this church. When they're sick or when they're bereaved or when they're hospitalized. Whatever it is, we don't take it for granted, God. We say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, I'm believing you for souls today. Lord, our system isn't perfect. Help us as we seek to work out a system, Lord, where we can be better in touch with those who make decisions. Where we can keep track of people who make decisions. Forgive us where we've been slothful, Lord. Give us yet another chance. We yield it all to you. Ask you to have your way. In Jesus' strong name, hallelujah, uh, that none 